I'm a registered dietitian and will be your clinical evaluator to assess what you've learned in the past three months on your nutrition support rotation. And if you fail, we will drink your blood. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so do you have any questions before we get started? All right, so here goes. What is enteral nutrition? Food that like isn't yummy. Have you tasted that stuff? Well, it's not supposed to be taken in orally. Enteral nutrition are perfectly balanced formulas that go directly into the stomach via a PEG tube or an NG tube. Okay, so when and why is enteral nutrition used? When people don't feel like chewing, which I can't understand. It's actually, it's, it's used for delivering nutrition and supplements to patients who are incapable of digesting or chewing food normally. So where is the peg located? Usually in a farm. Not a pig, a peg. That sounds exactly the same. No. Peg stands for percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy. The tube connected directly into the stomach that are placed for feedings that last longer than two weeks. Two weeks? Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so where is the NGT or nasogastric tube located? Naso as in the nose? Yes, yes! Oh, okay, for a second there I thought you were... Never mind. Okay, so the nasogastric tube is supposed to go through the nose to the back of the throat and down into the stomach. And these are usually used for less than two weeks. Alright, so next question. What is an advantage of enteral nutrition? You won't have to floss. I hate flossing. Uh, yes, but enteral nutrition can help reduce more serious complications and supplies the gut with preferred fuels such as glutamine, glutamate, and short-chain fatty acids. Alright, next question. Um, how should the bed be placed when a patient is on continuous enteral feedings? The bed usually should be placed on the floor. You mean like in degrees, right? Um, I've heard that it's always good to turn 360 degrees. She's crazy! Okay, well, they're supposed to be placed at 45 degrees to prevent aspiration. Why would you want to prevent inspiration? No, aspiration. No spiration? No, aspiration. To breathe in foreign materials. Why would anyone want to do that? Gosh, if only. <sighs> um, if you need to lay the patient flat on their back, you need to stop the feeding and wait 30 to 60 minutes. 30 to 60 minutes? Ain't nobody got time. People have got time for that here. So, what are the disadvantages of enteral nutrition? You can't eat pizza. Or Fruit Loops. Or Fruit Loops on pizza. It's just terrible. Okay, other disadvantages include dumping syndrome, discomfort of tubes, disruption of electrolyte balance, fluid overload, aspiration, and loss of oral gratification. There is a syndrome for like everything nowadays. All right, so the next question. What is important nursing care for enteral nutrition? Oh, I know this one. Force feeding. No, never, never supposed to force feed your patients. It's important for the nurse to do the following. Ensure feeding tubes are in place, assess nutritional status, monitor the ins and the outs, assess signs and symptoms, check for residuals, assess for bowel sounds, and the patient's toleration of feedings. Are there any questions? Thou shalt not kill. So what is the overall goal of enteral nutrition? To make a patient's life miserable. No, um, the patient will be receiving adequate nutrition based on the demands of their body so that they can actually survive. Alright, now moving to another subject. What is parenteral nutrition? When your parents feed you. I'm sorry, um, why are you even here? Because my parents want me to be here, duh. Parental education 101. Those who have the gold make the rules. Oh, I think I need a hamburger. Goodness gracious, pull yourself together, woman. Parental nutrition is actually feedings through the veins. So any idea what the two different types of parental nutrition are? One is when your dad feeds you, the other is when your mom feeds you. So there's peripheral or total. Peripheral is feedings through the veins and the arms. And total is catheter through the vena cava or the right atrium of the heart. Okay, this might be an easy one. Which kind of parental nutrition can administer higher levels of glucose? The sweeter one. The central line. Okay. I think I definitely prefer that method because I like sweet things. What is peripheral parental nutrition used for? It is prescribed for patients who need modest amounts of nutritional support, who normally are not in a hypermetabolic state. It contains no more than 5-10% to dextrose. Mix electrolytes in the solution and also administer lipids. Um... Hey, what's up? Oh, I'm just hanging out with this diet person. 
I should go. So from everything that we've discussed, do you have anything to add? No. Finally, do try to list um, just a few nursing care procedures for PPN and TPN. Ugh, this is going to be so painful to watch. <sighs> Fine. The nurse should assess nutritional status, lab values, especially electrolytes, IV site, and monitor vital signs, daily weights and ins and outs, assess for signs and symptoms of infection, monitor blood glucose levels, assess for any complications in the central line placement, make sure to consult with the dietitian or the pharmacist, and know that the patient should be weaned off before discontinuing any feedings. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure that was just a lucky guess. Okay, one more question. What has more complications, enteral or parental nutrition? Parental nutrition.